Hello, and welcome back to Bulls with the Bard. My name is Cakes, I am your host. This week we are talking to the lovely Erin Drill, but before we bring you that content, we want to give you a disclaimer in iambic pentameter. Here it goes. Sometimes when you get high, things can get blurry, and sometimes cameras get fuzzy as well. We shot this interview while out of town and lacked our better lighting equipment. The interview itself is really great, so please excuse the crappy quality. Now, without further ado, welcome Erin Drill. Hello, and welcome back to Bulls with the Bard. I am here today in Boston on location with the wonderful Erin Drill. Erin, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Erin Drill. Um, I'm a senior at Emerson College now. Um, I'm studying theater and performance. I love Shakespeare. I, I know Michaela from the Commonwealth Shakespeare Company Apprenticeship, which is which so, much fun. so much fun, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I think. All right, let us smoke a Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's do it. interview. Interview. All right. To begin with, Mr. Drill, <laughs> um, what experience got you to love Shakespeare? The first time I did um, a Shakespeare play was in high school. Um, we did Love's Labor's Lost, um, and I I remember like I hadn't done any Shakespeare, or really seen any Shakespeare that had made me like Shakespeare in any way because I just feel like there's so much bad Shakespeare I know that, like, uh, that it's like oh like I under understand why so many people are like we don't like it it's because like people ruin it for you yeah um and then you see it good and you're like oh I actually oh, like, like that why did but I um <laughs> Love Saber's Lost I like remember auditioning and being like this storyline and everyone was like the storyline's so stupid like it doesn't make any sense like what is happening um and then uh, I was cast as the King of Navarre, which I was really excited for because I think, yeah, that was like my first like leading role in a show in high school. And so I was like, oh, like cool, even though I didn't know anything about doing Shakespeare. And I wouldn't say that like the director was really great at uh, working on Shakespeare, but through the process, I found. I just like realized how funny Shakespeare is. That was what it was. Yeah. It was like, oh my god, like all this physical humor is just like built into it. Like all the things we were doing, the whole scene with like the letters, everyone hiding. So good. So <laughs> it's such, such a great scene. A, that's co comedic genius. Yeah, it, it is. is. And I was like, oh my god, like this is funny. And I think that was what made me like love and appreciate it. I was like, oh my god, I didn't get this. Like there's so much like sex humor, there's so yeah. much physical <laughs> comedy. And personally, I've never actually like I've only done Shakespearean comedies. Cool. Um I've never done a Shakespearean uh tragedy or whatever, which uh you know I definitely want to do, but just having that specific experience of always um doing comedy and, and finding how how fun it can be, you know, because Shakespeare knew good theater, all like this ridiculous hiding things or everything else, like sword fights and, and you know, like, yeah, uh, yeah. like it's, 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 uh, yeah, and like witches and ghosts, it's like good. Yeah, good. like yeah. it's all exciting. It's exciting. All right. Who has been your favorite character to play? Definitely Malvolio. Yeah, I definitely sure. Malvolio. <laughs> That's who I played when we did the Apprenticeship. We did Twelfth Night, and first of all, Twelfth Night's a perfect play, yeah, in my great. opinion. I think it's just like perfect. The structure of it is just genius. Um, like, it's amazing. And Malvolio, I just loved that experience. Um, it was fun going in, actually, never uh, um, having seen or read or knew anything about Twelfth Night. Yeah. I only had seen She's the Man, in which Malvolio <laughs> is a tarantula. So I didn't like, so I didn't know anything about the character, um, which was like cool to go in, like not having any preconceived notion necessarily, and just yeah. kind of going with, like, oh, I totally get this character. He's like this tightly wound, like, like <laughs> lunatic, but like who's super, like, passionate yeah, about. Yeah. Everything like he's all he's doing this all for Olivia, 
and like he just like everything is like that's what uh, I found from the text um, and so it's just like a really, really, and just such a good cast, such a great director. Jenny Israel directed, um, really like our first read through, we, she had us like on our feet playing and it would like that already. We were just finding like the physical vocabulary with each other and uh, like it's, and there was just such a talented group, like that it was so many people to play off of and work off of. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's also, it's really cool that you got the opportunity to play that part because I feel like typically you think of Malvolio and you think of someone like a little bit older, but like, I would argue you were one of the best parts of that show. And like, I would, you... I mean, yeah, that's the thing about going in it is that like, because I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't, I didn't know that there was, like normally it's older. Or yeah, and there's, I don't think there's anything in the it, text and it was fun, that says it was it fun because be. actually towards the performance, I watched like some older clips because I, I normally, like I didn't want to do it at the beginning because I was like, I don't want to just steal other people's mm -hmm. ideas. And if I watch it, I'm automatically going to have that uh, notion of it. Um, but then after a while, I was like, I made up my own notion, and now I need to, like, break out of it, I guess. Yeah, like, because yeah. then I'm, like, telling myself, like, oh, you have to do it like this, because this, and then I'm like, no, no, I don't. Like, this person did something completely different. So, um, yeah, and then seeing, like, very different versions. Like, I remember this, there's this one, like, movie version on YouTube that's really somber, mm. really somber. And Malvolio is just very serious and quiet and like not at all how I played it and I was like like it can be so many things which is really cool um and there is a lot of somberness in the show yeah, like it, yeah. there's a lot of um yeah that underlying I mean everything well not for Malvolio obviously it's really a tragedy for Malvolio yeah although in my opinion um I found it I think Melody is one of like Shakespeare's best characters he's so funny it's so fun like just being an asshole to everyone and then like it's you like go out and just get you're totally humiliate yourself <laughs> that's the thing it's like you can't like you actually have to go out and just be an absolute goon and like <laughs> not like because it's just like that's literally what it is like I have this like ridiculous letter scene where I'm just like all over the place and then like coming in with like the yellow stockings like so funny and like I love the garters like I would like try to make it like kind of like kinky and be like, ah. like <laughs> yeah um, I remember because <laughs> it was so fun but Malvolio is so um you know at the end it's such like a tragedy yeah my friend actually told me she saw the the most recent version at the globe which apparently was amazing and it was like one of the last productions that what was it what name? Uh, emma rice, emma or rice yeah. yeah she like took over and then they're kind of like she's leaving now because they kind of made her because it was like her work is incredible but wasn't aligning with the mission mm -hmm. of the globe and i feel like i think some people were kind of like, no, this is where you go to see it in its original context. Yeah. That like, this is the globe, like that you, and, and I remember I saw it before she stepped in when it was that, and, and that was a really exciting experience. And so, and so I understand that. True. I think there's definitely like, her work's amazing and I want to see more of it. And I think there's just like, she, like, you know, yeah. she should have her own company or something. But, um, but apparently at the end, Mel Volio, which was played by a woman, in this uh, production, kills herself mm -hmm. um, because of the end. Like everyone ends up happy except for Malvolio. Yeah. He's humiliated, and like his last line is "I'll be revenged on all of you," <laughs> which is so fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so funny, but like it, it's sort of like a tragedy. But I kind of always tried to because I wouldn't. I didn't think of it in that route of like he's so scorned that he's gonna like kill himself like he says I'll be revenge on all of you like he's not done and um <laughs> he is not done and he and he um I feel like through the process he finds a truer version of himself yeah. because he's kind of like he's trying to be something for Olivia and he's this I'm the perfect steward of your house and that's not really who he is and then like through this process like that freak in the yellow stockings is the real him because he'll do anything for this woman and in a weird way it's like even though i felt at the end 
Um, and at the at my very last speech is like the only time um, Malvolia speaks in verse. Oh. Right at the end, he comes back and he's like, basically like o Olivia. He thinks that Olivia wrote this letter to him when it was uh, other people who don't like him and are making fun of him. Um, but he still thinks it's Olivia at this point. And they kind of take it too far and end up torturing him, which is a difficult scene, actually. Yeah. Um, that that really was hard because going in, I, I had the notion of like, this is madcap comedy. And then going into that and being like, they kind of like, it gets to a place where it's like not funny anymore a mm -hmm. little bit. And it's kind of like, I wasn't sure how to go about that tonally and um, how to, I don't know. And I, I don't even necessarily think I, I figured that out, um, even in the performances. I would like to try it again, cause like to see it. But that scene, I remember struggling really hard with that. Cause I was like, then, you, then I'm not just like, you know, a, a little funny guy. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm really hurt. Um, and then at the end, yeah, I speak in verse and I'm like, Olivia, whatever, like, wh why would you do this to me? Um, even though it's like crazy. And I remember I like came in with like my hair crazy, like <laughs> yeah. I've been like being tortured and like the thing. And I'm like, Olivia, like, um, but it's like, I don't know. I still, I think he finds a truer version of himself. So I don't, I still think he has a happy ending anyway. Awesome. If you could play any one of Shakespeare's characters, who would it be? Um, I think my answer at this moment in time is Shylock from The Merchant of Venice. Ooh, okay. Um, because I don't think I would really be typed as Shylock. You know, I am Jewish and am, like have become, and I was like B'nai Mitzvah because I'm a twin, so it's B'nai. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yes, that's because cool. B'nai means children's. Uh, like Bot is boy, Bar is girl. Um, but either way. Um, what does it say? <laughs> uh, Shylock! Shylock, yeah. Shylock, <laughs> Jewish. Um, exploring my my religion and my heritage through acting. Yeah. He's also, um, like, one of the greatest characters yeah, in the Yeah, he is. And, like, really, you know, a complicated character. And it's, like, so cool that Shakespeare wrote, like... Is it Christopher Marlowe that wrote The Jew of Malta? Yeah. Yeah, The Jew yeah. of Malta is, like, a... It's like a stereotypical image of like this greedy evil Jew who's like 100% a villain. Mm -hmm. And then like Shakespeare kind of drew from that story with this, but put in a lot of other stuff and you know, it's all over the, but, um, but he took that and like, he's he a, made it human. Like, I don't yeah, know. He he's made a it, villain, but he, he has. He is a villain and at the end, like, I don't know. I feel like in the context of the time, like, like at the end they make Shylock, um, like give up all his property and convert to Christianity. Um, and, <laughs> oh God, poor Shylock. Why do I always want to play the like the <laughs> ever suffering, like, like, <laughs> like kind of sympathetic villain? You're right, like, I don't know, so yeah, cause human. it's like, but yeah, it's like, it's it was written enough that like, I feel like in the time people could have been like, yes, he's converting to Christianity. We don't like Jews. Yeah, and it could be like that, but also like with so much humanity that now we can look at it and be like, oh my God, like he has this amazing speech, like, like half not a Jew hands, like, you know, um, all these things that you kind of could take out Jew and put any marginalized group mm -hmm. and it applies today. Um, yeah, so just very, very um, human. Awesome. Okay, last question. Last question. If you could give someone who is just starting a career in Shakespeare a piece of advice, what would that piece of advice be? Um, that's a good question. Shakespeare is kind of a bitch intellectually. Like you really do have to do a lot of research and be like, look up like what every single word that comes out of your mouth means. And like, um, I think like when I, like the first couple Shakespeare plays, before I did Commonwealth really, um, I didn't like do that. And then I, cause I was like, that's too much, I'm lazy. And then, <laughs> I, and then I did it cause 
I was in a freaking program for it. <laughs> Adam. So reward- yeah, and Adam. And we have like text Dadam. analysis. Adam, we love, we love you, Adam. Always. But it was like going that that deep into the text and being like, oh my god, like it. I don't know. Getting that specific with it, like it's really rewarding. It's a lot of work and it's annoying and you won't want to do it, but it's really rewarding. Yeah, and you'll be surprised like how words have seven different meanings and all of them can work for the context that he just wrote in. So then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I have a choice. Yeah. I can make a choice with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, That's Like when you do that work, it opens up so many new avenues. Yeah, exactly. And with like um, playing with the iambic pentameter and just like the rhythm of it and, and understanding like f- like just feeling it and letting that like influence give you an experience because yeah. you're just like riding it yeah <laughs> awesome all right and that concludes our interview segment Yay! if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more content like it please like us on facebook at bowls with the bar Follow us on Instagram at Stone Shakespeare and subscribe to us on YouTube at Bulls with the Bard. Thanks, guys, and see you next week. My shroud of white to go with you. Oh, three ferret, no part of death, no one so true. Did share it.